Hello everyone, back to tuning into the second winter 2022-2023 season one roundup from Gazworthy. So here we go again, we can get 15 or so non-range models together to see what they're all showing for the winter of 2022-2023 for only the second time this uh, season. That said, there will only be one more uh, go at this at the end of November. So, uh, so yeah, we'll just see what all the long range models from the world's leading forecast centres have to say about this coming winter, and I shall get on it for you in a moment. Big, big video for this Saturday morning. Just to say about the first video thing was our 6am uh, upload. We've got weekend forecast and a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on today as well. So please like, share, subscribe on this. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. We will have the 9th winter 2022-2023 update for you tomorrow at 10am and that one is going to be a little bit of a solar special. Thank you so much Richard for our seasonal, seasonal model roundup uh, gift. Thank you so much Rich uh, for the gift. Nice and wintry there. I wonder, I wonder if that's what the models will be suggesting. Let's have a look. Show. Thank you so much Richard uh, for uh, the gift. Right, so let's begin with the North American models then. We're going to go to Canada first of all. This is CanSit's mean sea level pressure anomaly for winter 2021, 2000, no, 2022, 2023. From tropical tidbits with high pressure sitting over and to the east of the country. And you would have thought that could be bringing wind from a little bit of an easterly direction. It's anti-cyclone, so it should be quite dry, but it could be a little bit on the cool side. The temperature anomaly, though, is actually holding up quite nicely, a little bit above average, not excessively so, but around half a degree or so above normal. And a relatively dry winter predicted there from uh, Kansas via tropical tidbits with that anti-cyclonic signature. NWME suite of uh, models next. So uh, this is NASA uh, temperature anomaly prediction for the winter of 2022-2023, about average, but there is a little bit of blue there. So a little bit cold on average just to our south, a little bit cold on average over here, uh, around Baltic Sea, just to our east as well. So that seems to get a slightly cooler winter, especially so maybe for more southern uh, areas. And the uh, NASA precipitation uh, anomaly forecast is rather drier than normal as well so an anti-cyclonic and um, maybe quite chilly winter especially so in more southern parts of the country gm nemo uh, looks like that with the temperature anomaly so a mild of an average winter being predicted there by uh, the GEM, above average temperatures forecast, and uh, maybe slightly on the drier side, but not as strong a signal as we saw for uh, the NASA model. NCAR uh, temperature anomaly forecast is also slightly above average in most orange colours, so a mild of an average winter predicted by NCAR. And this one's a little bit more unsettled too, slightly above average rainfall, particularly much so to our north, but slightly above average in many areas. Probability forecast from IRI. Remember, this is the uh, Columbia Climate School International Research Institute for Climate and Society. The uh, temperature probability forecast is uh, looking like this across Europe. Um, so most areas are a little bit above average, but, but probability, you know, probability favouring slightly above average temperatures. For the UK and for Ireland, again, a little bit um, above average, uh, probability favour slightly average to mild and average winter. Although, Northern Scotland does have a uh, low probability of a uh, below average temperature for this uh, winter. So, not an excessively uh, strong signal for, for a mild and an average winter anyway for the UK. And precipitation uh, looks like that. So, not much of a signal uh, for uh, precipitation in terms of the prob probability forecast for this winter. What is quite interesting, though, is that there's quite a bit of yellow up over Scandinavia and also towards Iceland, which might imply, but uh, that's, you know, a probability is favouring a, uh, a drier than average. So, that might imply that the IRI probability forecast model is, is kind of hinting at a little bit of blocking within high latitudes, maybe, possibly. Uh, and then Patal Peng's analogues look like this. So uh, this is for the winter 
2023. Remember, Patal, Patal Bank looks at sea surface temperature anomalies across the world in any given month. In this scenario uh, in September, and then creates an analog space forecast based on those sea surface temperature anomalies with the years and past similarity. So, uh, Patel is going for low pressure down towards Spain. Rather a bizarre um, uh, 200 millibar height anomaly. Below average heights, low pressure towards Spain and in the North Atlantic around Green. The Azores high is pulled away from us towards the east side of America. And then there's quite a bit of high pressure across northern Europe generally. So it looks like the jet stream will probably be going something like that. But at the same time, the high pressure, they'll probably bring, be bringing up wind from the southern direction. It's a very strange uh, 200 millibar high tonight. But the upshot is Patel is forecast a slightly milder than average winter, though not excessively warm. The real warmth this winter is across uh, northern and eastern Europe and also western parts of Russia. And the uh, precipitation anomaly is dry up and all. That's a recurring theme with a lot of these ones so far from uh, the North, North, North American models. Anyway, a rather dry uh, winter. We will go on to European models in a moment. CFSB2, 700 millibar height anomaly for uh, winter 22 23, showing below average heights, low pressure to our west northwest, above average heights in the central part of the Atlantic. Looks rather westerly and Atlantic driven. That does include an anti cyclonic December, though, I can tell you. The, uh, the temperature anomaly for winter is above average. Notice it's a very, very mild winter forecast by CFSB2, again, from most parts of. Uh, Europe, East Europe, the most deep red colours. Wow, wow, wow. Really my winter predicted there. And the uh, precipitation anomaly is a bit wetter than average. So a mild and wet winter from uh, CFSV2. Right, that's it for the North American models. Let's come uh, closer to home to Europe. This is the ECMWF, first of all, to start us off. This is the mean cell pressure anomaly from ECM. WF. Now, this one looks a little bit more interesting from a cooler perspective. So, we see high pressure sitting to our north, reaching in from the Atlantic to the north. Because you would look about and think that might bring the wind in from an easterly direction in this wind, wouldn't you? The uh, 500 millibar height on this shows an uh, area of high pressure above average height centered towards Scandinavia this winter. So, again, that might imply a little bit of an easterly type uh, influence through this winter. The temperature is ever so slightly above average in those uh, yellow colours. That's around um, average to half a degree above that. So we are slightly on the margin of average side, despite the high pressure being to our north, and uh, no particular signal for uh, precipitation with this model. Let's go to the Copernicus suite next. So we uh, go to Metro France. Uh, this is the mean cell pressure and only from Metro France, showing uh, high pressure is generally dominating through the Atlantic into much of uh, Western Europe. The temperature anomaly from Metro France for this winter is uh, a bit above average, around half a degree to one degree above normal. And the precipitation anomaly, weak seal, but probably hints at being a little bit on the dry of an average, especially so uh, just to our south. Uh, DWD, the German model looking like that, has uh, a high pressure centred over and slightly to the east of the coast. The core of that is around the Baltic Sea and to west parts of Russia. But again, sort of a chart that you'll look at and think that it might be bringing a bit of an easterly type influence uh, into, into western parts of Europe. We've got low pressure down here as well. That could imply sort of a negative NEO type pattern, although there is low pressure around Greenland uh, as well. The temperature anomaly is a little bit warmer with DWD, with more towards one degree uh, above average, despite the anti-cyclonic signal um, precipitation-wise. Again, there's not all that much of a signal for precipitation, but you'll think a, a largely drier average uh, winter would be likely with that high pressure sitting over and just to the east of the country. CMCC looks like this, CMCC, again, showing sort of high pressure close to Scandinavia, low pressure around France, that's a recurring theme, isn't it? The Azores high pushed well away from us into the, um, into the western side of the uh, North Atlantic, over towards uh, the, uh, the east coast of America, and uh, what not. You will think again that the jet stream is probably going to be down here somewhere, this high pressure to our east might be, might be bringing in the wind from like an easterly type um, direction. The temperature anomaly is ever so slightly above normal, again at around half a degree uh, above average, certainly not excessively warm 
winter. And precipitation-wise, about average precipitation, driving average just to our east, western average just to our west. And then we've got the E triple uh, C, which again, it's much more much. It's a lot of these European miles are seen from the same hymn sheet. Uh, with high pressure over and to the east of the country, up towards Scandinavia. Low pressure is around Spain. That is a recurring theme. And again, you will probably think there's going to be some sort of easterly influence coming in uh, with that. Couldn't all these models be indicating a Scandinavian high, I wonder, for this uh, winter? Um, you know, could it be a, a winter that's rather easterly? Uh, temperature anomalies, again, about average to a little bit above in most areas. So no more going for a cold of an average winter. That has to be put on the table. But then again, these models do tend to overcook the temperatures a little bit. Uh, so, um, uh, I mean, if we do get a Scandinavian high on and off through winter with quite a bit of easterliness to winter, you expect to quite a cool winter at the very least. But most of these miles are going for slightly above average temperatures. And largely drier than average winter is predicted as well. Although it is a relatively weak signal, but the ECCC does signal uh, a drier than average winter for much of uh, Western Europe. And then JMA, but JMA uh, means sea level pressure anomaly, which is the wrong chart. Well, let's start with that. So this is November, December, January, actually, where the JMA is forecasting in the earlier part of winter ex extensive blocking around Greenland and Iceland. But as we go into the um, next period, which is December, January, February, it actually maintains that blocking quite strongly in the North Atlantic around Greenland and Iceland. Again, it's such like you look at and think that we'd probably be bringing like wind from the east, maybe from the north or the northeast at times, quite a bit of low pressure down towards um, the Azores as well. So it looks like a negative NAO AO type uh, pattern map. Uh, nevertheless, despite that, the temperature anomaly for the winter from the uh, Japanese Meteorological Agency is uh, slightly above average once more and a largely drier than average wind. So near normal to slightly drier than average is uh, indicated there. Let's sit with the Asian theme and go to the Beijing Climate Center. So this would be 500 millibar height anomaly from the Beijing Climate Center penultimately, showing a mid-Atlantic ridge extending back to uh, quite extensive northern blocking with a trough of below average heights, low pressure over and to the south of the country. Again, it is a kind of chart that you look at that and think that we're likely to likely to be bringing the wind in from an east or a north direction quite a lot of the time. The 200 millibar height anomaly also showing that mid-Atlantic ridge quite nicely going up towards uh, Greenland type scenario, the top of low pressure the south of wind potentially in from an easterly direction. I have to say, this is one of the most interesting seasonal routes I've ever done, uh, you know, with these long-range bars. It's, it's very unusual for so many of them to be going for high latitude, but you know, not high high latitude blocking in this instance, but like high pressure towards Scandinavia, anyway, it, with a lot of these models. You know, quite unusual, even if they aren't forecast a particularly cold winter. The temperature anomaly uh, for this winter to looking like that, Beijing Climate Centre, about average, slightly above, very much in line for all of the other miles, but precipitation anomaly uh, for winter looks like that. So, notice driving average just to our north and northwest, a little bit wetter than average, maybe to our east. Could that be wintry conditions pushing across the North Sea? <laughs> Who knows? I haven't better go that far. Um, now, a large number of driving average side, I would say, for this winter. And then finally, we've got our own UK Met Glow C5 model. This is the mean cell pressure anomaly from uh, Glow C for the winter of 2022-2023 with a trough of low pressure over the UK and West Europe. It is connected back to a mid-Atlantic ridge, which goes up towards Greenland. I can show you the earlier uh, mean cell pressure anomaly this, of course, set the cat among the pigeons when it appeared earlier in October. So this is for November, December, January, with extensive blocking up towards Greenland and Chotha below over Western Europe. So early winter looks best for cold there with uh, Glow Sea, but even the following 
uh, actual trial to appear for the winter to temperature in February. Looks as though it would allow for cold interludes at the very least. The temperature anomaly in line with all of the models, uh, about average to a little bit above, colder than average around Iceland. Uh, and the precipitation anomaly looks wetter than normal above average precipitation. Of course, if the jet stream is more south and we start bringing cold air into that trough of low pressure, then some of that precipitation could be wintry. But, um, you know, all the models are actually going for slightly above average temperature. So it's very interesting update, this. All of, well, many of the models, are particularly the European models, are indicating high pressure within... Uh, Northern Asia, you've got the Asian models as well doing this. Uh, so the Asian uh, European models are indicating uh, high pressure to the north, generally of the, of the UK, over or to the east or northeast, somewhere towards Scandinavia. A few of models take the high pressure even further north and generate it into genuine Northern blocking. The American models are not as convinced about this, I don't think. It is primarily the European and Asian models that are, that are looking quite interesting from a pressure mean sea pressure slash 500 millibar height anomaly point of view. They're all going for a mild and average winter though, so we have to put that on the table despite the synoptics looking quite interesting. The overall temperature anomalies are above average. But as I always say, the first thing is that you've got to get the block into place and then you worry about where the cold's going to come from. But the first thing you've got to do in any sort of cold winter pattern is to get the high pressure in the right places, to get the blocking either to Greenland, to Iceland, to Scandinavia, um, one of those places, and, and then you see Start thinking about where uh, you're going to get the coal from. So, all quite interesting for this second seasonal, seasonal model roundup. I'm sure you will agree. We will do it all over again one last time at the end of November. And it will be interesting to see whether these trends are maintained or not. If you enjoy this video, then please like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. If you do give us a sub, you'll be able to see future weather content, including future winter updates. That brings me on very nicely to uh, tomorrow's night winter update by will at 10 a.m. It will be a solar special as well. I can tell you that. So I'll be looking at, uh, at solar uh, data in the first half of the year. And then we'll do a regular winter update in the second half of the year. Thank you so much to Richard for the uh, seasonal model roundups gift. Thank you so much, Rich. And for this one, that's all for now. And thank you so much for watching.